Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to What the Freak. This is my first attempt at a podcast. Um, there is no intro video. There is no scripted uh, introduction. This is uh, just something I've been wanting to do for a couple years now. I wanted to get together, talk with some of my friends, some of the people I work with, some of the people who are just important to me in my life and um, connect with me in some capacity and just talk about what's going on in the world, what's going on in our lives and try to make a little better sense of the crazy world we're in and just to create more conversation and more authentic connection and hopefully over time to inspire others to do the same. So today I am joined here with my very good friend as well as co-worker, companion, uh, Josh Walker. We've been working in Freak Brothers Pizza for about five plus years. Known Josh since uh, we were in college together. We were roomies, uh, senior year of college. Um, Josh, welcome to the show. Thanks. Glad to be here. Um, Everything you said is true. (laughs) And... Uh, it's been a good uh, been a good run so far, and looking forward to another five five years. Well, it's been more than five years, but I guess five years. Well, like grows. yeah, that's I guess I was referring to that. But <laughs> yeah, maybe, dude, maybe that's a good uh, first topic to jump to. Is uh, I know you and me have had conversation be- before about like kind of how crazy and rare it is for us to like not only still be friends, but to be like <laughs> even better friends over just the whole host of things that we've been through together. You know, we've been obviously working together for over five years. We were roommates in college and took classes together. Uh, we've been running partners together. Uh, we've just done a lot of a lot of crazy things, been through a lot of stressful times, and still somehow, you know, some of the people who I've been on the journey with the last five years have come and gone, but you and me have, you know, through tough times and good times, been able to somehow uh, keep things together. Um, do you want to just speak? A little more on that yeah i mean it's uh it's crazy it's been actually uh a challenge i i'd say to do that um you know there's been a lot of uh a lot of times where it's like you gotta figure out the best way to approach situations and um being through a lot together we've had to do anything like any good relationship does you know give each other space allow each other to like pursue their own passions at different times and support them in that allow them to see other people wait scratch that last one (laughs) but um you know like at heart we have this like connection i think i mean and it comes down to a lot of little things like running or nintendo or just like having having a good time doing doing things like making the best out of like situations and making it fun and I think that's like what it comes down to. And, you know, obviously we've uh, been through a lot of like tough scenarios together. And, you know, sometimes we want to chew each other's heads off. I'm sure sometimes simultaneously. But um, <laughs> like, I think it's been it's been good the way we like typically approach those situations. And we have uh, good discussions about it usually not during the head eating times but a little bit afterwards and uh i mean we we're both you know have this like these goals in mind of like what our relationship looks like and where we want to go with things not just with us but with the business and things like that that it's like you know what's more important here like what like what do we need to do to keep growing keep being successful you know so yeah yeah i think that last point is super important of just I feel like one of the things that has really uh, kept our relationship going is just identifying lessons that we've learned, even if we've gone through some tough times where, you know, we're maybe we're both hating on each other, just hating on the situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but you go through those things no matter what. That's just part of life. And I think one of the things that has pulled us through is just our ability to pull the lessons out of that and see like what what was really in that situation and how can we use that as a tool to get better and to move forward and not make some of the same stupid mistakes again, yeah. whether that's like in the business or how we interact with each other. And I feel like we've gotten a lot better over time on like learning what we need to create like the healthiest relationships. I think some of that has been, you know, learning what's the right amount of like space 
to have, which I think is a topic that a lot of people don't talk about as much, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think especially the first few years when we were growing the business, it, there was a lot of time that we just spent together. And I think anyone spending a lot of time with anyone else um, over time can just be a lot. And uh, I think we've done a good job of figuring out kind of what is our pacing and like mm -hmm. what is our flow and how can we really respect each other's boundaries and, and respect um, the differences that we have and then learning to more like come together in the places that we really do connect and that we really get along well and we, we have like synergistic energy rather yeah. than like opposing butting heads right, energy. Right. I think we've kind of figured that out a little better over the last couple of years. Totally. Yeah, man. Like it's a, uh, I feel like at times, sometimes uh, I try too hard to like keep, keep that space and separation out of like fear of spending, you know, too much time together. But then there's other times where, it's the opposite you know it's like you you got you've got to spend all this time together at this point where we're do, where we're at right now and what we're doing and you can't do anything about it so like it's not a perfect balance by any means but um like you said we've definitely learned a lot and been able to kind of figure out when and how to approach that situation for the most part and you know Sometimes it's like, yeah, man, I, I miss that dude. I haven't seen him in like three or four days. Like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, I feel like I should, but it, you know, then there's times when I'm like, man, I wish I don't see this guy for three or four days. <laughs> so I, I try not to like get too uh, upset one way or the other. Just kind of take it for what it is. I know he's out there doing his best in some way. And I'm just like, all right, you know, I'm when I, when I do see him, we're going to be ready to work and ready to get take care of business so yeah yeah dude i i feel the same way and i i think it's cool that we can have such like open dialogue about it now because i think that's perhaps one thing that at least i've seen in others of my relationships when you aren't able to talk about those uncomfortable things um and really like put your own ego aside a little bit and like not take yourself so seriously like i think one skill i've really developed really tried hard to consciously develop over the last year or two is like look at myself and be like oh i'm being so dumb right now like i'm being so difficult right now like what am i doing you know and i may not be able to see it in the moment but at yeah. least like afterwards i can look back and be like ah like i actually don't like who i was in that moment and i wouldn't want to be in that other person's shoes on like how i was um having a conversation with them or how i gave them feedback in a way that was kind of like vindictive or you know maybe i could have done that in a better way that wasn't so harsh or you know we don't we don't always see that in the moment but i think the ability to almost like separate yourself from yourself and look at yourself as if like you know oh man like let me put myself in josh's shoes and like how did he receive how i said that and be like oh damn like i could have done that a little bit better so i'll just you know if it was bad enough that it, like I need to go back and apologize. I'll try to do that or, you know, or just, you know, it's good information for next time to do it, to do it better the next time around yeah. when a similar situation would come up. Yeah, definitely. Because someone in your position, you know, um, is always in a place where there's a chance you're going to have to be giving someone feedback for something, you know, and I've noticed that in the recent maybe years or year, you Oh, kind of already have like an idea of how to approach it beforehand you know like going into this situation you're like all right here's what has worked and here's what hasn't worked with this person with people in general and so like despite how i feel about this i think the best way to approach the conversation i'm about to have with this person is you know kind of take it from this angle with this attitude and it's going to be better for both of us in the end. And so I've noticed that like a lot. And sometimes, you know, it obviously doesn't happen. You don't have time to prepare like that or you you approach it in a way that doesn't work out as well. But I mean, for the most part, it's really cool to see that happen because I think like, I mean, you have employees under you that you have to have conversations with all the time. And I think like seeing that relationship is much better than you generally see 
and uh, work environments and kind of uh, critical conversations like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, I'm glad you pointed that out. It's some that I, I definitely have been consciously working on more over the last year, especially. I think it's something I've always strived for, but maybe just haven't hit the mark on as much in the past. And I feel like I definitely have made some strides, especially this last year to get better about doing that. And I've noticed that in you too, right? Like I've, you know, I'm the one trying to set the example the best I can on like, how do we treat each other Mm -hmm. in a work environment that can even be really stressful sometimes and not just like walk over each other's toes. Um, But it's cool to see that like, the more that I step up and try to set the example and, and do better each day, you know, it's not like there's ever a place where I'm like, oh, I've arrived, like I'm good, you know, which I've fallen into that trap sometimes where I feel like, oh, like good enough for now, which maybe you need to do that sometimes. You can't always, we're not, we have limited amount of energy each day to like really, maybe I just don't have the energy that day to handle that situation the best that I could because I'm tired or I have five other things on my mind or whatever it is, but I try to keep doing better. And I noticed that like the, you know, the other employees in our company seem to get better at that over time too. And I hope that that's at least some small influence that I have on trying to, you know, just be the best example I can of how to communicate with each other, like just human to human, Mm -hmm. you know, I think to me, that's one of the biggest tragedies in a lot of businesses that I've worked in that aren't my own, or that I just see out in the world is that we are so dehumanizing when it comes to work. And we almost like make these excuses that, oh, well, it's just work. So like, I just, I just need to get you the information or I just need to tell you off or I just need to give you this feedback. And that's your problem to like how you receive that. You know, on the one hand, I get that. Like you can't, you know, baby people's feelings. I fall into that trap too, or like, you know, certain people who've worked with us or, you know, just certain, certain types of personalities can be more prone to like, I guess, going too far on the end of like being a victim or too far on the end of like having to be coddled Mm -hmm. which i don't think that is fully useful and effective especially if it keeps happening over and over again but i think we've both done a better job and i've seen this in you too with how you deal with some of the other employees that have worked with us that you know you've kind of figured out that balance like all right where is when is the time to be more empathetic in this situation and really understand you know what this person's trying to share they had a challenging experience to really hear him out and it can get to the point where if that's happening all the time and like every single situation is like this new thing that's coming up and this whole drama that like you do sometimes have to kind of cut it short and be like okay what's actually what do you actually need you know what's actually going on here and you know you still do it in a kind the kindest way you can but sometimes you do i think have to be a little more assertive and just succinct because we don't have unlimited time to hear every person out on every problem they're going through you know we're going to do the best we can as like someone's employer or manager but you know i can't i can't sit down and have a therapy session with someone every time that some kind of issue is going up you know to some degree yeah that person has to learn to take more responsibility for their situation and i'll do the best i can to connect with them be empathetic create the right environment for them to thrive in Um, but there is a piece of personal responsibility in there that also needs to be, I think, taken into account. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, work with all sorts of people, you know, in the industry and over the years, and it's definitely, uh, been, a been fun is one word I could use, I guess, to, (laughs) to kind of work with all these different people and kind of figure out how to make the system get along still and how to approach all the different situations um because yeah definitely early on i was more about like quality you know quality control like main thing like all right this isn't good enough like you're not doing a good job kind of thing and um you know turning turning it into more of like a analogy of like a coaching thing was one way you've always kind of put it to me recently and that's you know definitely a better approach now where it's like treat them like someone who's, you know, a novice, you know, not an expert, but learning and wants to get better. And how do you help them get past this block of like, what's not happening that's good enough, you know? And then um, another thing is like, you know, <laughs> over the years, you think you get perfect one day, but it, you're, you're making mistakes like time and time again, less mistakes, you know, and less repeated mistakes. But 
um, still new mistakes every so often. And so like the more that happens, the more I think you can understand other people making mistakes and um, being like understanding of it, but also like, you know, letting them know that there's a mistake and trying to help them figure out how to not let, make that happen again. Um, but like totally be understanding, be like, it's, you know, it happens. It's, it's fine. Like obviously mm-hmm. strive for better, strive to do a good job and minimize situations from coming up or things happening that set us back for some reason that we have to correct. But um, like, it's not the end of the world for for you or the company like everyone's gonna be okay yeah 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 definitely i think that's an important balance that you pointed out of really being understanding when someone makes a mistake and uh, you know having that certain degree of compassion and be like oh yeah like i've made a lot of mistakes too you know and i think that's a really grounded place to come from and i think people really receive you a lot better like it's a lot more effective when you are able to kind of put your ego aside and be like okay i putting myself in their shoes i might have done the same thing or i have done the same thing maybe many times you know and but then the other balance of that is is you don't want to just create a culture of Mm -hmm. oh it's okay to make all the mistakes in the world and like never get better like that's definitely not what we're going for either so it's like yeah allow space for those mistakes to happen address them and and get to the root of like why did that happen you know hey like it's cool that you made a mistake let's figure out how we need to clean this up in the moment maybe you dropped pizza on the floor you know that's that's a mistake you know and that's not good um you know it's not the end of the world don't freak out you don't have we're not going to send you home or anything or you know you're not going to be demoted but like you know, obviously we don't want to drop pizzas because now we have to go remake them all again. You know, we lose the material cost on that. It's like you, and it just, it just interrupts the whole flow of things and mm-hmm. actually makes it less fun and enjoyable for everyone. Uh, the more mistakes that we make. So I think I've kind of learned over time that people actually don't want to make mistakes. And that's like a shift that I made. I think initially I would just get upset at people and almost like see them as stupid or just like, oh my God, like, how could you do that? Um, but again, it comes back to that humility piece of like, oh yeah, like I've made so many mistakes, you know, when I was in their shoes, like I did the same thing. So like, who am I to, uh, really get down on them too much about that? Um, but we are trying to, to your second point, like set a certain standard, right? And we're doing that really for the benefit of everyone. I'm not going to give someone feedback just because I'm trying to get down on them. Okay. Maybe every once in a while, like if I'm in a bad mood, then that is partially why I'm doing it but ultimately ideally and most of the time I'm doing that because um, because I want them to get better and I know they want to get better and as I see people improve they enjoy it more they have more fun like people want to be competent and I think when you come from that mindset of like hey this person didn't want to make that mistake like they want to do better let me help them do better it's such a it's such a shift and it makes it so much easier for them to improve when you approach them from that mindset, which is opposite of what I learned at, for example, when I worked at Chipotle, it's like, if you made a mistake, there was someone right there to point it out to you and tell you how awful it was <laughs> and tell you just don't do that again um, in like a very forceful way. You know, and overall, I love Chipotle as a company and as a brand and I met a lot of great people there and I did learn a lot and I grew a lot in a very short time there, um, but it was not an emotionally enjoyable experience or safe feeling place to work at that time. You know, I think and hope that they've gotten better since then from what I've heard from some people who've worked there since then. Things have gotten better in the last five years. But, um, you know, but that's not to single them out. It's like I think that happens in a lot of work environments and probably a lot of kitchens and restaurants. It's very, you know, step on each other's toes just to get the job done. And I think that's one cool thing about our culture that we've decided is going to be different is that we want to work in an environment where it does feel safe to make mistakes and we have people there to support you and uplift you to try to keep getting better and keep improving so that they have a more fun time we deliver a higher quality product to the people who are going to be receiving that and you know ultimately continue to just elevate ourselves personally and professionally in the workplace yeah man um the only thing i want to say is like 
the one mistake Chipotle makes that I have a problem with is when they just don't wrap that double wrap burrito well enough and it falls apart. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the big one. They should be reprimanded for that. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's great like being a part of a team. You know, everybody working together for the benefit of each other, um, which I feel like this last kind of um, maybe fall to springtime, beginning of springtime, we kind of had a lot more of that. We were way busier than ever before. We had a lot more people working consistently for us, which was huge in Hmm. not just minimizing these mistakes we talk about, but just putting out like a better product consistently and having a better work environment consistently when you're seeing the same people and you kind of know how the flow goes with them and can really just work as a team um you know and unfortunately we aren't we had a we have a much smaller team now you know um things are slower and not as much going on uh but i remember one thing we talked about back in march i want to say when you know started doing some stay at home stuff and um we knew things would be changing was like let's make the best of this time and like one way we we talked about doing that is like all right let's improve some of these systems and processes and that's great and we've done good work with that but another thing we talked about was like look we have a small squad now so one thing we can do is like improve our communication like reach maximum communication between this small group of people that are going to be working um, together every day or, you know, a couple people together this day, a couple people together that day. But, like, and that alone has, like, created such, like, a more efficient workplace, I think. And, And we have all come together to decide like like every order is going to count now. Like, we don't have as many orders. We don't have as many, like, rushes of, like, hundreds of pizzas going on but like how can we like give the best possible experience to each customer and that's whether they're a you know a third-party delivery customer who we don't even see or someone who comes up to the window you know and i think this opportunity is like really um given us a chance to like come together and create like such a better like team and environment for the the freak brothers and um i mean it's like i'm not even doubting that that will won't continue as things eventually like pick back up and we grow and Mm -hmm. open up our doors to more workers and more customers again like i i think it's like such a good foundation i mean we've had a long time to do it now months you know not which wasn't as expected but you know the these months have really like established like a new foundation for like the work place and uh the just the quality of like work and product that's going on there yeah yeah totally i it's been amazing to see the shifts that have happened over the last few months and to really take this crisis as an opportunity for us to work on what we could work on you know obviously we can't Um, It's very difficult to try to drum up a lot of sales right now. Um, You know, people just aren't going out to eat as much and, you know, people are trying to save their money and there's a lot of uncertainty out there. You know, we lost all of our events, which was half of our business. We lost all of our dine-in traffic, which was another quarter of our business. So we're running on like 25% of the sales that we used to uh, bring in, Um, but we're still making it work, you know, how we can and it's been really cool to see yeah just that like people aspect of our team to really be more cohesive you know even just watching you and eric our general manager and like how much more of teamwork you guys work together i know you guys you know just like you and me haven't always seen eye to eye on everything but it seems like lately you guys are really this like this pair like this force that is like moving in the same direction and more or less sees things uh, the same way now at least on most issues um, where I didn't see that as much previously you know I saw a lot more instances where you didn't see eye to eye or, or one of you would come to me having an issue with the other one or vice versa and I'd have to try to figure out where the disconnect was and but it's been cool like there were some moments and I forget exactly when it was where you guys had some drop in some conversation mm-hmm. where you just like saw eye to eye for like the first time it seemed like in a major way 
and I think like from then on it's just gotten like better and better um, so yeah I, it's cool to see the co- cohesiveness that our team has developed and to really see that there is an opportunity in every challenge that comes up and I mean we've dealt with that for the last five plus years that we've been doing this um, every time we've went through something extremely challenging to kind of tie it back around to what we were talking about earlier you know we've really tried to take the lesson out of that and and find the opportunity in that challenge or in, even in that failure you know we've had quite a few f- failures you know flops of events where we didn't sell hardly any pizzas and it was just we put in so much effort that at the end of the day it, it felt like it didn't move the dial forward um, but when i really look back even on those experiences in some way even if it wasn't financially even if it wasn't for our own good health, um, <laughs> we, we learned some hard lessons from some of those challenges and we were able to take those and apply them and not make the same mistakes moving forward and ultimately have a much better sight on where we were headed and how to not fall in as many potholes um, when we were moving forward. Yeah, man. Uh, some of those back-to-back-to-back event weekends are just draining to say the least and yeah I mean when there's so much going on um in terms of you know responsibility within that short time frame it is hard to really see eye to eye with other people playing different parts within the company um because you might need something from them but they have no idea what's going on with your set of responsibilities in that time frame and you honestly have no idea what they're doing at that time I mean vaguely but so I mean it's hard when you just like expect something for part of your responsibility from someone else and uh, you you don't really have the like proper systems in place to make sure that's as like um, clear and you know for everyone to know like what needs to be done and why it needs to be done Um, and so I mean I think this time together with Eric working with him a lot more closely especially in his environment more so um has been good and allowed us to connect more and given us this opportunity to hopefully like I mentioned before just like use that foundation to grow from there and do better as the things open back up and get busy again yeah yeah definitely I'm Last thing I want to say, and, and I think we're about coming up on time to wrap this up, but uh, one thing you said that I really liked is that um, it was something like, I have I have very little doubt or I don't have any doubt that we're going to continue, you know, what we've done over the last few months, like as we move forward, as things, you know, hopefully sooner than later, open start to open back up again, as we're getting busy enough that we're able to rehire a few of the people that have worked with us in the past or maybe hire some new people that it's like we've made a fundamental change in the culture of our company and of our work environment and I feel really good about it like I as much as it sucks to be kind of in a slow bleed financially right now you know we're surviving um, we're gonna we're gonna make it through this I have no doubts about that but uh, you know, by no means are we doing well in, in that capacity. Um, I feel the best I've ever felt about our business because of just the bond that we have with each other, the connection we have with each other and with our customers too. It's been cool really for the first time to have enough bandwidth to get to know people and be like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, like Joe owns like the barbershop down the street yeah. or you know, Megan, you know, comes out here once a week and grabs a couple pizzas from her family or, you know, whoever it is, you know, Justin F is our, you know, ordering from us three times a week on a delivery service. And, you know, we got to meet him in person when the church had opened back up uh, just for a brief short time. And it's cool to, it, it reminds me of why I do this in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't, as you know, I didn't get into this because I was aspiring to be the greatest pizza <laughs> chef in the world. I didn't, I had never worked in a restaurant. I didn't know anything about pizza when I started this. It was, it was really a, a happy accident that I even got into this. But for me, it's always been about people. And it's always been about the human connection, the human experience. And I think that's what really distinguishes us. I think through that, we have learned to create an amazing product that a lot of people love. And not everybody loves it, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, but it keeps getting better too, you know? And I, I, 
I love that we are a culture of growth and that it's like, you know, nothing is so set in stone that we can't evolve over time. And to me, that's one of the most exciting things about um, business and entrepreneurship and the culture we've created is we really have a culture of let's keep getting better, you know, personally, professionally, let's keep improving our product, let's keep improving our level of service to people, let's keep improving how we can help the community. Um, it's cool to have all of those different aspects that we get to be involved with. And I think it all it makes all the work worth it and all the challenges that we've gone through, some of them so excruciating and, and so challenging, you know, and I know every successful business owner or, or anyone in their career who really makes it far has gone through. You know, we all have these stories of like, yeah, you don't wanna you don't wanna I wouldn't wish that upon anyone to be in my shoes at, during those times, those long work weeks, those exhausting work weeks where you don't have anything left. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think that has really built a lot of character in us. I know it definitely, definitely has for me. And it's helped me to become a kinder person. It's helped me to become more understanding. And it's helped me to like, even more focus in on what really matters. And I think that's the last thing I'll close with and I'd love to hear if you have any final thoughts is, I think for me, this this slowdown during this pandemic has really helped me to refocus on like what really matters in life and you know as things do open back up again and i don't think things will ever go back to normal but as we hit kind of whatever this new normal is it's really caused me to evaluate what things do i want to not do again and not continue moving forward and what things do i want to do more of moving forward and for me a lot of that comes down to just this right here you know that human connection um, just those people who are who I know are really there for me to spend and invest even more time and resources into them and into our relationships so that we can you know that's really my only stability in times like these is like <laughs> like the homies you know the yeah. people I'm closest to like hold me down and we we have no idea what's going on in the world or what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next month but like I know that I got Josh in my corner and I know that like we're going to figure it out together you know and to me that's like the most comforting thing in, in kind of these crazy times yeah man um i couldn't agree more with some of the things you said and they say if you love what you do you don't work a day in your life and i would say that doesn't apply completely <laughs> um there are some weeks and weekends that it's all you're doing is work and you mostly hate it but it's thinking of that bigger picture, thinking of continuing to create a great experience for workers and customers and people around you at the events and at the Churchill and things like that. Like, I mean, seeing it mo many times in the past and like continuing to strive for more of that is kind of what makes it feel like, you know, this isn't, this isn't work. This is, you know, creating a great life for people and yourself, you know, because you enjoy all of those positive moments and interactions, which like sometimes in other jobs, maybe you don't like, what are you working towards? You know, like mm -hmm. what exactly is the outcome of what you're doing? I mean, you know, not to generalize, but I feel like this definitely has like some, something so much more tangible, but, um, otherwise, yeah, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, looking forward to checking in and seeing where we're at down the road, having another good chat. Heck yeah, dude. Well, it's great uh, having you on. Thanks for jumping on this first first attempt at a, at a podcast episode. Um, it was great conversation as always and excited to, uh, you know, as we were talking about, review this footage and see how we could do better and you know, hopefully people watching this got something out of it. If you made it this far, then yeah. you're awesome. <laughs> uh, I guess we're not too boring that you wanted to watch this whole thing. So cool. Um, but yeah, it was, it was super fun. I'm glad we're finally doing this after having talked about it for many months and, you know, excited to see where things go from here. Awesome, dude. This was What the Freak. Hope you all have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon.